Let's work an angular closure problem. In this scenario, we have a five-sided traverse connecting in a closed polygon points A, B, C, D, and E. And the direction of side A, B is known. And the angles that you see here that are interior to the polygon are measured angles. Therefore, as the scope at the left says, we're going to adjust the interior angles of this traverse adjust the errors, and we're going to compute the azimuths of all the traverse sides expressed in the counterclockwise direction. We want to compute this in the counterclockwise direction. Counterclockwise, of course, runs this way, doesn't it? So we want to be consistent with this uh, pattern that's established here for the direction of AB, that direction goes this way. Thus, north, as we see it, is at the top of the drawing here. Okay, so if we're going counterclockwise, that means we need to come up with the direction going this way, this way, this way, and this way for the remaining four sides. Before we can do that, we need to adjust the angles. So first we need to determine the angular closure. We have a, a fixed relationship of the number of angles in, or I should say the number of sides, which would be the same for a closed polygon. The number of angles in a closed polygon minus 2 times 180 degrees will predict the, nu the number of degrees of the sum of the interior angles in a perfect polygon. What do I mean by that? Let's say it this way. The sum of those interior angles, make a little angle symbol, the sum of the interior angles equals n minus 2 over, or excuse me, times 180, 180 degrees, and n equals the number of sides or the number of angles. So in this case, we have five sides. So uh, if I plug n equals 5 in here, for n equals 5, then the sum of the interior angles would be n minus 2, that's 3, times 180, that is going to give us 540 degrees. Okay, so we need to find out how close to that we actually got. There is error in every measurement, therefore we're going to find the sum of the errors, the, the sum of the effects of the errors. Some may cancel with each other. Well, the way we do that is simply take every last one of these and sum them up. And in a perfect world, they would add to 540 degrees, but we know they're not going to. So rather than write them out and spell it out for you, I encourage you to take a moment or two, maybe pause this video, and add those up right now and see what you get. The sum that I get is 539 degrees, 59 minutes, and 39 seconds. Okay, so if I subtract that from, or subtract 540 degrees from that, I will get 0 degrees, 0 minutes, and 21 seconds. That's a negative angular error in this case because it is less than 540. That's the sum of the angular errors in these five angles. Well, we correct that. The simplest way to correct that, the simplest accepted way, is to distribute that error evenly among all the angles. So, I'm going to take my 21 seconds, I'm going to take my 21 seconds here, and 
divide that by my five angles. Okay? So that gives me that gives me a correction of 4.2. Now consider, I almost forgot, if we have a negative 21 second error, I'm going to take the opposite in sign of that to get my correction. So here I would have a positive 4.2 second um, correction per angle. Now in reality, dividing down to the tenth of a second may be overkill. So it's not uncommon that we could say I've got five angles. I'm going to apply a four second correction on four of those and a five second correction on the last one. This is simply an acknowledgement that on small traverses, this may, it may be more trouble than it's worth if, if you're doing anything by, by hand to go with a tenth of a second. For our purposes today, I'm going to do that. So, these are the corrections I will apply, apply to each angle. So, I think I'm going to start here at angle B, and I'm going to apply four seconds to each angle. Remember, I'm overall, I'm this many seconds too few, so I'm going to have to add seconds to each angle to get the sum back up to 540. So I'm going to add four seconds to this one. I'm going to add four seconds to this one, four seconds here, four seconds here, and the last one I will add five seconds to. You will find that on very small traverses like most of us run, I'm talking a traverse that's say you know, a mile across by a mile across, the seconds don't add up to much at all. So these are my corrected, uh, corrected interior angles. So now I need to calculate interior angles. Excuse me, azimuths. In order to calculate azimuths, I have to start with something that I know. And I know the direction from A to B. It is 94 degrees, 16 minutes, 27 seconds. So, if I'm going to proceed counterclockwise, the next course whose direction I will calculate will be from B to C. And you can see it here, B to C. That will be the next one. And the next one will be C to D and so forth. So in order to make this happen, in azimuth computations, I can take the back azimuth of line AB, which is the course previous to the one I'm going to do next, and then I'm going to add the interior angle ABC, B being the vertex, A being the backside as we'd call it, and C being the foresight. So B is the vertex of that angle. When I add those, I will get the azimuth of line BC. And then I'm going to do this over and over and over again. So let's start with some math here. So my starting azimuth was 94, 16, 27. That is the azimuth of AB. Well, I need to either add or subtract 180 to get the uh, back azimuth of that. So when I add 180 to this, I will get 274, 16, 
27, and that is the back azimuth of AB. Okay, that is the direction going now from B to A, isn't it? The back azimuth of AB is the same as the azimuth of BA. And in this case, I'm going to add the interior angle. Now, this is the adjusted interior angle, so I have to make sure I use the adjusted seconds. So in this case, I'm using 56, 51, 55. Okay, that is angle A, B, C, isn't it? So then when I apply this carefully, I will get 331.08.22. That is the azimuth of BC. Does that seem to make sense? I think so, because here, if I look carefully, angle the direction from B to C is going this way, 331.08.22. Twenty-two. That's headed off in the northwest quadrant. Yep, that seems pretty reasonable. Okay, so I'm going to continue. So now I have to come up with the back azimuth of BC. So the back azimuth of BC, I can get that by either adding or subtracting. This time I'm going to subtract. Whether I add or subtract, um, isn't really critical because you can still end up with the same result. You may take more steps uh, going one way or the other, but with experience you'll start to see the pattern. So when I come up with this difference, what's that going to be? That's going to be 1510822. That's the back azimuth of BC. I'm going to add the interior angle at C. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, that interior angle at C is 233.38.55, right? Now remember, I'm using my adjusted angle. So this is angle B, C, D, isn't it? Well, when I do this, I'm going to come up with an answer that is 384, 47, 17, right? Yep, 17. But is that a valid azimuth? No, because a valid azimuth is between 0 and 360 degrees. So I simply subtract 360 degrees, and this becomes 2447.17. So this is now the azimuth CD, isn't it? OK. Well, I think we're on a roll. Let's keep going. So I need a back azimuth. And in this case, I'm adding now the angle at D, aren't I? Because I am between line CD and DE. So this is 64, 57, 56. This is angle C, D, E. And that gives me 269.45.13. That is now azimuth DE, isn't it? Well, it won't take me long, and I'll have this finished. So now I need the back azimuth. Very repetitive now, isn't it? OK, I think you can see that's 89. 45, 13. That's the back azimuth of DE. And then I'm going to add 
94, 55, and my corrected value was 19, wasn't it? And this is angle D, E, A. So now when I do the math, I will get 184, 4032. That is the azimuth EA. Okay, now here's here's where we stand. Let me let me put all of this summarized up here for you. We have azimuth CD. We said was um, let's see, twenty four. See if I can write on my side like this. Forty seven. 17, right? 24, 47, 17. And then DE was, whoops, 269, 45, 13. And then AE, or excuse me, EA was 184, 40, 32. Well, I've got all five sides now, but is there any chance I've made a, a computation error? Sure there is. So in order to prove to myself that I have done it right, I'm going to use the fifth interior angle. You see, I have used this one and this one and this one and this one, but I haven't yet used this one. So what I will do is calculate the direction going from A to B and see if it indeed does come out to be the same thing that I started with. So let's do exactly that. Here I've got I've got my azimuth from E to A. Well, I can come up with the back azimuth of that. That's 180, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the, the value I will subtract. And that gives me 4, 40, 32. And then I'm going to add this interior angle, just as we have done on the others, 89, 35, 55, correct? And thus, that was angle EAB. And lo and behold, it does come out the same. 94, 16, 27. So that is azimuth AB. Yes, this checks. It is okay. So that's, that is how we adjust interior angles on the traverse and we com have computed all the traverse sides expressed in the counterclockwise direction. Just one thing I want to remind you on, when we work in the counterclockwise direction, we add interior angles in a process like this. And when we are going clockwise, instead, we subtract the interior angles. There is a difference here. So simple rule that you have to apply consistently. So before you start the problem, next time you do this, ask yourself, which direction am I going? Because that will determine whether you are adding interior angles or...